So tonight, um, tonight's uh, night is being put on by Panasonic, and we're showing off the new uh, Vericam. And we have from Panasonic, we have Matt Alexander, <laughs> and and all the way from Melbourne, if you can believe it, Rob Myers. <laughs> so before we get uh, before we get on to their presentation, uh, our guest of honour tonight is uh, I've just found out he's actually called Doctor Don McAlpine, if you can believe that. He is now a doctor. I want to make sure I get this right. He is a doctor of perform a doctorate in performing arts. Congratulations. Uh, so, as some of you may know, Don uh, Don McAlpine is ACS and ASC. At the age of 38, he was described as a WOLC, W O L C, the world's oldest living cameraman, and that title was given to him by Bruce Beresford. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so he's still, uh, I think you're a little bit older than 38 now. Um, he uh, was originally a physical education teacher he, who joined the, edu uh, joined the ABC in 1956. He became the chief cameraman of Film Australia, where he took leave to shoot a film called The Adventures of Barry McKenzie with director Bruce Beresford. After that film, he decided uh, uh, that he would go out into the feature film industry. And since that time, he has done a minimum of 56 features. Uh, the latest feature he has shot is called Ali's Wedding, which he shot, coincidentally, on the Vericam 35. Um, so he is going to talk about his experience with the Vericam 35 tonight. But before we get to Don, I'm going to invite Rob to come on up and uh, talk about uh, the Vericam. If you can indulge me for probably about 15, 20 minutes, I do have some PowerPoint slides. I will keep it to a minimum. Um, I want to hear from Don tonight, as, as, as you do. Um, but before that, just want to sort of talk a little bit about where we've been on the very cam journey with the 35 and now on the LT. Um, Richard, thank you for the intro. Um, and thanks for having us tonight. And thank you for coming along tonight. Um, this is my first time in the clubhouse and it's a magnificent facility and yeah it's it's great to see it packed so yeah thank you very much um so as richard said joining me tonight is matt alexander who a lot of you know sydney based i'm down south don't hold that against me um we have all the way from japan um one of the heads of planning um takashi okabayashi or okaba <laughs> so if there are any curly questions this is the man to ask them to, so we will defer to, <laughs> to Okaba. And there is someone in the audience who can translate Japanese quite well, so he has no excuse, all right? So don't let him get away with not answering your question. Um, yeah, Don, thank you for joining us, and Sasha, thank you also as well. Um, these guys have been a big part of our Vericam journey um, in the last, oh, yeah, recent times, in the last three or four months. Um, been great to have you guys on board. Thank you very much. Um, so just to talk a little about where we've sort of been in the last sort of year and a bit. Um, a year and four months ago, we released the Vericam 35. <coughs> and as Panasonic have done for a long time, we've always started at the top. And we did it with M2, we did it with DVC Pro days, and we did it with P2. We've always sort of gone for the top end of the market first. And we've done that, especially with the Vericam 35. The guys in the factory have created this, this incredibly unique, award-winning, really, really special sensor that right now no one can touch on a number of aspects of this sensor. And that's obviously at the heart of the Vericam 35. Um, that's what's got us a lot of critical acclaim. Yes, we were really late to the market, and for that I sincerely apologise. Um, it's a real shame because about 12, 13 years ago we pioneered the move in, electronic, in the electronic world um, to the film world with the original tape-based fairy cam. And I know there's a couple of people here tonight who sort of shot on the old F27. Um, and that was 12 years ago. We, we started that and then we had a long time in the wilderness, which we apologise for. Um, a lot of the reason I, th I think we were, we, we held back is we wanted to do something different. We didn't necessarily want to do something better than the other guys, but with the benefit of, of three or four years of seeing what everyone else did, we thought, yeah, we can do things a little bit differently, just, just think outside the box a little bit. Um, and a lot of that involved yeah, discussions with, with existing users, with old Vericam users. Um, and more than ever, the factory really listened to what everyone wanted, and that's sort of where this was born. And the 35 is really designed to attack the high-end 
cinema market. That's, that's where it was pitched at. And I said, yes, we were late in the market, but we think we've got a, a pretty good offering. Um, in a little over a year, we've done, yeah, we've, we've done a lot of projects around the world. Um, one of the most sort of, I, I guess one of the game changers for us was Orange is the New Black. And some of you probably know Netflix have got this sort of hang up about 4K and not really wanting to get into the debate about um, the rights and wrongs of that debate um, tonight. But it opened a lot of producers and a lot of DOPs eyes to the very cam um, because they were forced, some say unnecessarily, away from what they were shooting on to look at a 4K camera. Um, and a lot of those people who were forced to move away from what they were quite happy shooting with um, fortunately ended up on the very cam. And a lot of those guys were quite happy with what they were shooting on, but they found something that they were happier shooting on. So um, that really played into our hands nicely. And so I, don't, I don't want to debate the rights and wrongs of, of what they're trying to dictate and what they're trying to tell us to do, um, but I thank them for doing it nevertheless. Um, Locally, we've been involved in some yeah, some pretty um, good projects. Um, Colour of Eden actually was something we did um, with some guys at IndyMax in Melbourne, and that was actually the first Vericam 35 production in, the, in production in the world to go to air on on television on Channel 7. Um, so we, we've had a couple of firsts. Um, our friends at the ABC have been big P2 supporters for a long time, and they've taken delivery of four of the 35s. Um, so that your kids are watching some pretty high-end uh, work on play school and, and Gardening Australia, my God, that looks good in 4K. It, 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 it just wouldn't, what's his name? Christo's beard wouldn't pop. It's just, it's fantastic. Um, so yeah, we, we've been involved in a, in, a, in a lot of projects. In the space of the last probably six months, um, we've really pushed the updates on the Vericam 35. So we're now at a stage on the 35 where we've delivered the full feature set and a whole lot more. Sorry, I'm in your way. Um, yeah, we've delivered the full feature set of functions that we promised in the early days and a lot more sort of user requests that came in along the way. And the upgrades will continue for this. In no means does the LT take over from the 35. The 35 still the granddaddy that will still sell. Actually, since we've released the LT, the, the interest in that, there's been a resurgence in, in, in people looking at that for a second time. Um, it does have advantages over that. They're, they're different cameras. They're for different purposes and things like that. And they also marry quite nicely as, a, as an A and a B. Brings us along to the Vericam LT, which is next to Matt there. A lot of what's gone into the LT is, again, voice of the customer, user feedback. Um, what did you like about that? What didn't you like about that? What can we do differently? As I said, we wanted to attack the high end. We wanted to start at that high end mark because we had this amazing sensor, so we thought it deserves all the bells and whistles that go along with that. Um, and then, yeah, people wanted something smaller, whether it be for rigs, movies, flying it, um, steady cams, just something that you could put on your shoulder for more than five minutes. Um, so we're at about a third less length. We're at almost half the weight. Um, we consume probably about 40 or 50% less power on the LT. So there's an awful lot of pluses that, that give it a lot more mobility and suit it more to a single operator operation rather than a, an accrue type operation with the 35. The LT inherits the exact same block, colour science, colour processing. So if you're shooting in the same frame rates and the same um, colour space on the two cameras, the images are absolutely identical. So there's no compromise in your image quality between the 35 and the LT. They are, they are the same camera. There's no difference between them. There's a few differences. Yeah, there's a, there's a few differences on outputs and things like that. There's a couple of codecs that you get in there that you don't get in there. So there's there's some good points and some yeah, there's some cross points and some things missing from from both of them. Um, so same same pictures. As I said, more designed for a single operator rather than a than a than a crew. Um, and the thing we're most excited about and is probably given us the, the most sort of feedback and interest is yeah, you've, you've listened to us and you've given it an EF mount. So the camera ships with an EF mount and then you buy a user interchangeable PL option. So with a couple of Allen keys, you take off the EF mount and put the PL mount on. 
it's as simple as that and that's something you guys can do in the field it's a like i said it's a usable interchangeable um adjustment so i said the same sensor um the hollywood post alliance um late last year which is the sort of one of the the high-end bodies in la um oh, in california um awarded the the sensor with a with one of their prestigious awards and that that's quite that's quite a big thing from those guys 14 plus stops 14 plus stops said same same sensor so that gives you hdr future proof pictures so whatever you've shot on here 12 14 months ago if you've shot it in log you've shot it at 14 plus stops you shot it at 12 bit um you're future proof and that's the same with the lt so you don't need to worry about hdr um, we're covered on both spectrums native iso the dual native iso was was really one of the standouts on this that um that took us by surprise it took us a little while to get our heads around it and i'll be honest we don't fully still know exactly how our sensor manufacturing plant which is separate from our broadcast factory actually does it we know what it does but we don't know exactly how it does it um, a lot of the feedback in when we were sort of looking at developing this camera um, we talked to a lot of guys who shot on film and the best thing they said about film was we change our film stock and we have two different cameras um, wouldn't it be great if we can do that in the electronic world and that's what we've done here with the dual native ISO so you've got two native ASAs one at 800 and one at 5000 um, what they're doing technically and I've got some shy slides we can go to later but off every pixel you have two taps you have two outputs off every pixel one set at 800 one set at 5000 so that's on the analog stage of the block so we haven't hit any digital gain or amplification or anything like that it's purely the size of the capacitor with the charge and the voltage that's stored in those capacitors that sets the ISO, the ISO to either 800 or 5000 um, that's clever in itself, doing that two tap off every pixel, but what the really amazing thing is, normally when you're going from something like 800 to 5000, you're gaining up quite significantly, so your noise floor is really going to push up by quite a lot. We've got less than a 1 dB noise floor difference between 5000 and 800, and that's something that the sensor guys are keeping to themselves. I mean, Okabar and the engineers back in the factory, they, it's, it's a mystery to them no one knows so it, it really is cool and we can demo that we'll turn the lights off and you'll see the difference we've got a good 4k reference monitor so you'll see it warts and all um, in 4096 have have a look at that because it's, it's quite compelling talked about the um, PL mount um, option like I said it's it's user interchangeable there's no need to adjust the flange back the flange back is pre-adjusted on the actual adapter the collar just locks it into place and it's probably about a three and a half to four minute adjustment if you want to change between PL and EF so you've got that flexibility you're not locked into one you're not locked into the other um, the other plus is with the 5000 ISO that's going to give you an extra couple of stops um, a two times crop factor on this on the on the block if you want to run B4 lenses on there it's with those couple of things it's gonna this is going to suit a B4 lens mount probably better than any other camera on the market um, sorry I'm pointing to the wrong camera um, so what we're hoping that someone will come out so is that, that that's the PL it's a PL piece of glass on there at the moment the PL mount actually comes off and you're staring straight down the barrel of the sensor and that's nice and flush against the camera um, so we're hoping that some clever company will come out with a B4 whether it be Super 16 or, or two third whatever um, adapter that goes straight in there not onto the adapter itself so that's not going to give you that extra couple of inches you get with the um, the B4 adapters so it's going to make it it's going to instead of bringing it out to here it'll bring it back to there so um, quite adaptable and, and a lot of scope to it um, just touch on a couple of workflow um, things um, together with the 14 plus stops of latitude um, we the v raw um, is well sort of, sorry v log um, exceeds rec 2020 on on all three points so we've got a color gamut wider than rec 2020 and again that's future proofing yourself in terms of an hdr recording so again that's all that's all set there um, the lt has got a few inbuilt luts that this doesn't have um, 
and the two of them in particular um, are really designed for a, for a fast turnaround because a lot of the LT is going to go off to doco work and things like that. Um, there might not be a need or a budget or time to grade. So what we've now done is incorporated a V look LUT to the camera. It still gives you 1600%, your 14 plus stops of dynamic range, but you don't need to grade it. The look is baked in um, and the factory's optimised it for skin tones and also dynamic range. Um, it's a really, really nice look if you don't want to spend the time grading. And a, a lot of doco, sort of low budget doco shoots with a fast turnaround, um, even some episodic stuff. Um, in the US they're getting a great feedback from those guys who sort of, they're, they're forced to grade at the moment, they're forced to shoot in log because they want that 1600%, they want their 14 plus stops. But they're forced to grade. This means that some of them won't have to grade. It's not going to be for everybody. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a quick get you up and, and going type look. And again, we, we can show you that look on the LT. And that's something unique to the LT. And the two times crop factor is also unique to the LT. The 35 doesn't have it. In terms of frame rates, um, we shoot 4096 or 3840 um, up to 60p. In 2K or HD, we can go up to 240 frames. We have yeah, 60, 120, right through to 240. Um, to go above 60, we need a two times crop, so we need to scan half the block. A lot of customers have said, I don't want the crop look, I want to be able to shoot the full width of the block. Um, that technically is possible with line skipping as, as, as everyone else does it. Um, that's something we're looking at and considering implementing. Um, it obviously means changing the low pass filter, tuning it to 2K instead of 4K. Um, that's something we'll consider, but at the moment, yeah, two times crop to get you up to 240 frames, otherwise full frame at 60 frames. The flavour of the day is to shoot raw. Um, the 35 will shoot raw and the nice high-end world of the codex world, and that, that's the ultimate for shooting raw. It's not realistic for everyone's budget and everyone's um, project, and that's the only option to shoot raw on the 35. Um, on the LT, we will have low-cost um, raw options, and at the moment, the one that's sort of come out and announced that is Convergent Design on the Odyssey. So if you've got an Odyssey at the moment and you've got the raw option, V-RAW, V-LOG, well, sorry, V-RAW will be an option um, a free downloadable option in the coming months on, on your Odyssey. We're also talking to people like Atomos. So we'll have a third party affordable RAW option. So we take the RAW out via two 3G SDIs and that gives us our RAW and that's what that takes is 6G via two 3G SDIs. Um, and the Odyssey will support all the frame rates um, that the LT can deliver. All for three and a half grand with the raw option um, as against the raw option from Codex which is more expensive than the camera. That's, that's in the world of, of, of raw. Um, AVC Intra is a, is a really, really, really good codec and we've done a lot of tests with a lot of users who were adamant that they had to shoot raw and we sort of said fine you can shoot raw but please have a look at the AVC Intra codec first. Um, obviously it's not as good as RAW but it comes really, really, really close. It's a good option to consider um, and again you don't have an outboard recorder, you don't have terabytes and terabytes of files to worry about. Um, on a 256 gig card in the LT 422 24 frame you get 80 minutes of recording. That's pretty good on a $1400 card. That's the other plus about the LT is the factory have finally listened to user feedback which was saying our cards are too bloody expensive and they were. Um, we're now looking at $1,400 for that 256 gig card so it, it, it's, a, it's a realistic cost of media. In addition to the ABC Intra Codex we also do ProRes. This is where we get 444 so if you're shooting in 4K um, it's only 422. And that's one of the pluses on the 35, you can shoot 4K 444. That won't shoot 4K 444, that'll shoot 4K 422. In 2K or HD, it will do 444 in ABC Intra or 4444 in ProRes. So you still get 444 options on it. If you want high end on that, stick the raw recorder on it. You've still got that option to go high end with a raw option on the LT. 
Okay, we've got two card slots on the LT. Probably come right round. So 35 has got two main, two sub, and a proxy. On here, we've got one main, one sub. So there's been a couple of compromises to make the thing smaller. Um, and that's that's been one of them. So on the main card, you can do whatever flavours you like in the in the AVC intra range. Then on the on the proxy, which can be um, a micro P2 card or a standard off the shelf, say class 10 SD card, um, that's your proxy recording. That's a six megabit proxy. Um, it's an AVC intra long got proxy. It's a full 1920 1080 picture. That's that's good enough pictures to go to air. Going back to our DVC Pro DV base codex, it's probably equivalent to somewhere between 25 and 50 megabits. So it's a good quality codec, only at 6 megabits a second. So you've got a nice simple workflow. Um, and what we can do, we can, we can bake in looks on the main record, we can bake in looks on the proxy record. So if you want to do a V-log as your main recording, which most people are going to be doing on the, on the main card, um, you can do a baked in 709 look on your proxy. So then you can hand that to the client, hand that to the editor, hand that to whoever, um, and they've got their own copy in 709, so they've got their pretty pictures. They're not looking at flat log pictures. Um, again, a lot of versatility on, on, on that option. Similarly with, with the outputs on the camera too, you can bake a, you can, you can um, apply a, a LUT, you can apply 709 to the viewfinder. There's an SDI viewfinder out, there's two SDIs on there. You can be shooting log, um, on the main and you can be monitoring in 709, you can be looking in 709 um, or outputting RAW at the same time. So you've got a lot of flexibility and a lot of versatility with your outputs and also your recording capabilities. That's the basic camera kit, so camera head, handle, um, a really great little swivel mount. On the, on the 35, the menu panel is actually sort of lives on the side of the camera or it can come off on a little arm, but it has got a spot on the side of the camera. User feedback, they love that menu panel. Um, you've got a view option there, so you can obviously see your pictures as well. Um, but we didn't want to sort of make the body, but we couldn't make the body big enough to also house that as well. So they've come up with this great little bracket, which you can have it on the cameraman, on the AC side. You can even sort of have it down there. So if you want to shoot overhead, you can see it from underneath. Great little versatile thing. Plus that comes off and there's a little, yeah, one and a half foot cable. You can pull it off for the AC. So that's, that's the basic package, and, and that's enough to get you going. If you've got a small HD or an Alphatron or a Zacuto Graticule viewfinder, whatever, Blackmagic even, um, the viewfinder out's just a standard SDI, and there's a little four-pin Hirose which delivers 12 volts to power your, your viewfinder if you wish. On the 35, it's a um, proprietary, not a proprietary, it's a Hirose connector. Um, you can't use a third-party viewfinder on it. So you don't have to buy our viewfinder. If you do, it's, it's one of the best OLED viewfinders on the market. It's magnificent. But if you want an affordable option, there are others on the market. You're not locked into ours. Same with the shoulder pad, same with the grip. Um, obviously microphones, batteries and lenses and things like that. If you just want to start off in that package, you can. Um, and as an introductory special, that's going for about $23,000 plus GST at the moment. That's right, 20, about 23. Um, if you do want to build it up, um, Mike's the PL adapter, the arm, the shoulder plate, the viewfinder. Um, you're probably looking, ex actually excluding the PL adapter, you're looking a little over $30,000. Gets you the viewfinder, the plate um, and the grip. That gets you up and running.